Hello, America. Welcome to Your Leo Nation. I am the Chief, Mark Garrett. Welcome to this very special and I hope poignant episode of Your Leo Nation. You know, as we uh, make our way through the month of May, Peace Officers Memorial Day week, it is a time of remembrance and we are winding down. As a matter of fact, as this episode is released, it will be Memorial Day. And I know that many of you listening are observers of Peace Officer Memorial Week, been to many ceremonies across the country. And that is wonderful. That's what I want to talk about today about memory, about remembrance. And when I think about Memorial Day, the month of May, Peace Officers Memorial Week, I can't help but think about those officers with whom I worked over the years who lost their lives in the line of duty, whether it was through felonious action on the part of criminal traffic accidents. Either way, these men and women sacrificed their lives for all of us. And of course, the people who suffer the most are the families. Often, mothers and fathers, just as often or more often, spouses, children, extended family. These are voids in lives that can never, ever be filled. And it just struck me just over the last days and weeks about loss and about keeping these memories alive and the the larger importance that remembrance and ceremonies have in the preservation of our society. So with that said, I would just like to share a couple of very short pieces I came across recently in regards to sacrifice and and remembering these heroes and ultimately really what it means to our society. So let me start with this piece titled Remembering Our Fallen Heroes. It's by U.S. Attorney Roger B. Hanberg, and this is authored on May 14th of this year, 2023. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy issued the first proclamation for Peace Officers Memorial Day and National Police Week to remember and honor law enforcement officers for their service and sacrifices. Peace Officers Memorial Day, which every year falls on May 15th, specifically honors law enforcement officers killed or disabled in the line of duty. As the U.S. Attorney for the Middle District of Florida, I serve as the Chief Federal Law Enforcement Officer for 35 counties in Florida. During April and May, law enforcement memorials will be held across the district to remember those who paid the highest price by laying down their lives in service to their communities. Law enforcement is a dangerous profession. The statistics tell us that. Since the first recorded police death in 1786, there have been more than 23,000 law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty. On May 13th, a candlelight vigil will be held on the National Mall to dedicate the names of the 556 law enforcement officers who will be added to the walls of the National Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, D.C. With those additions, there will be 23,785 names engraved on the memorial. These statistics are a reminder of why each of us should be grateful to the members of law enforcement in this country who put themselves in harm's way to keep their community safe. We owe them a debt of gratitude that we can never fully repay. 
and 2022 was another dangerous year for law enforcement. Of the 556 law enforcement officers' names will be added to the National Memorial, 222, I'm sorry, 224 of those officers died in the line of duty in 2022. According to the 2022 statistics reported by the FBI through the Law Enforcement Officer Killed and Assaulted Program as of March 31st, 2023, 59 of those law enforcement officers were killed as a result of felonious acts and 58 died due to accidents. Four of those officers were from the Middle District of Florida. Deputy Michael Hartwick, Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Blaine Lee Lane, Polk County Sheriff's Office, Officer James McWhorter, Florida Department of Agriculture, and Deputy Christopher Taylor, Charlotte County Sheriff's Office. For each of these officers, law enforcement was not an ordinary job, but it was a calling. It was something they did because they were dedicated to protecting and serving the people in the communities where they lived. Through the law enforcement memorials being held across the Middle District of Florida, we get the chance to show that we will never forget the sacrifices made by those four officers and every law enforcement officer who has died in the line of duty. It also gives us the opportunity to express our gratitude for the love, support, and sacrifice of the families who stood by all of those officers during their time of service and who are committed to continuing their legacies. I hope that you will take a moment to show your gratitude and to thank the members of law enforcement who serve your community for everything that they do to keep us safe by attending one of the law enforcement memorials in your community. And as I said, I know that we're winding down the month of May and these memorials have passed but I had time to think about this and I'm looking into the future and I'm looking into things that we all need to do as responsible members of our respective communities to instill in everyone around us and our children, the importance of remembrance. And with that said, I want to read a second and final short piece about the meaning of Memorial Day, because that's why we celebrate, celebrate, that's why we remember our fallen peace officers during the month of May, because of the origin related back to Memorial Day. This piece is by a pastor, his name is John Matheson, and this is titled The Meaning of Memorial Day. What is the meaning of Memorial Day? It's appalling how few people realize the depth of its meaning for the freedoms we enjoy today. A large group of high school seniors were touring the Capitol in Washington, D.C. on Memorial Day. The guide posed the question, what is the meaning of Memorial Day? They thought about it, and together they said, it's the day the pools open. That's sad. Studies have shown that only about 25% of Americans know the meaning of Memorial Day. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to interrupt myself and editorialize here. If this, if this number is anywhere near correct, that only 25% of Americans, not young people, not elementary school students or middle school or high school or college. I don't have much faith in a college student's knowledge of history anymore anyway, but we're not talking about the younger sector of society. It says 25% of Americans know the meaning of Memorial Day. It is appalling. It's sad. And it's dangerous to this survival of our culture. It's dangerous to the survival 
of our society, our communities, what we stand for, what got us here, that people don't understand these basic facts of history and why they're so important to perpetuate. I'll continue. Memorial Day is about remembering. It has, quote unquote, memory in it. It's easy to forget the price that was paid for our freedoms. We can casually sit back and enjoy backyard barbecues, boat rides, and beach bashes. But the meaning of Memorial Day is that almost 1.5 million men and women have died so that you and I might enjoy our freedoms. We look to Thanksgiving as a day when we pause to give thanks for the things that we have. Memorial Day is a day when we pause to give thanks to the people who fought and died for the things we have. Peter wrote to the church saying, This is now the second letter I am writing to you in which I'm stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember. We need to have our minds stirred. We need to remember. It started during the Civil War when women began decorating the graves of soldiers who had died in that war. On May 30th, 1868, the day was designated as Decoration Day a day for placing flowers on the graves of the Union and Confederate soldiers throughout the United States. Decoration Day gradually became known as Memorial Day, and soldiers who died in other wars were honored. It quickly became a day to remember all people who had died in defense of our country. In 1971, the United States Congress declared Memorial Day a national holiday to be observed on the last Monday of May. We must remember that freedom isn't free. People died so that we could live. We have the opportunity to make decisions today based on the sacrifice of people yesterday. Remember the bravery of soldiers like Marine Sergeant John Bassaloni, who was awarded a Medal of Honor for his bravery at Guadalcanal. He commanded two sections of machine guns against 3,000 enemy soldiers for more than 48 hours before reinforcements arrived. You add the names of people you know to John Bassaloni's name. Spend some time thanking people and God for their bravery. People who have died in all the wars form an elite group that must never be forgotten. We must remember. How do you plan to celebrate Memorial Day? What difference will Memorial Day make during the rest of the summer and the rest of your life? Spend some time talking about the price for freedom. We think freedom is free. Freedom isn't free. It's the most expensive gift we enjoy. Share conversations about the price of freedom. I read these words, I've read them slow, I've read them many times the last several, several days. I think of my, about my father who served in World War II. Thank God he wasn't killed or you wouldn't be stuck with me <laughs> right now. But the whole remembrance topic is essential to the survival of any culture, any society. Over the last few years, we've seen despicable, despicable, ungrateful, ignorant members of our country tearing down statues. And I'm not just talking about statues of Confederate generals. I'm talking about Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln, my God. There's a man who sacrificed his life for the freedom of millions, millions of people, and for 
people yet unborn. And these despicable monsters tear down statues of men like him. They have no respect, no understanding, no appreciation for real sacrifice by soldiers, airmen, police officers, firefighters. They have no appreciation for sacrifice. They have no appreciation or understanding of history. They have no perspective of how to deal with challenging circumstances. They have no idea, they have no concept of anything greater than themselves. They are myopic, self-serving, empty shells of human beings. And they are either wittingly or unwittingly, one unwittingly, unwittingly trying to destroy this country. When you tear down statues, when you don't remember sacrifice, when you don't attend memorial services, when you don't attend 4th of July, Independence Day celebrations, you lose track of what God is here. When you don't take part in rituals, you lose track and understanding and appreciation of why we're here and why this country is so unique in world history. We cannot be sustained if we allow our fellow citizens and certainly our children to lose the wonderful gift of remembrance, of oral history. You know, the word indoctrination is often used in a pejorative sense. Oh, they're indoctrinated. They're indoctrinated. Well, indoctrinated, it, look, the core part of the word is doctrine. Doctrine. A statement, a meaning, a code, a law, a rule, a recording. So I'll tell you right now, yeah, I want to indoctrinate. I want to indoctrinate everybody in this country about the uniqueness and specialness of the United States of America and the fact that men and women of law enforcement give their lives to protect and preserve that uniqueness and that special place in human history, a unique place in human history. Men and women die to defend the Constitution. Yes, I want to indoctrinate my child. I want all parents to indoctrinate their child with good values, with an appreciation for history. Every single year since my kid's been three years old, we go to the same gravesite of a fallen Marine from Iraq. I never met him. My son certainly never met him. But damn it, we honor him. And my son is growing up appreciating the sacrifice that that 20-something-year-old Marine made for my son, for me, my wife, my family, my community, my country. So on Memorial Day and every day, but especially on Memorial Day and during the month of May, remember, teach your kids to remember. Let them know the cops are the good guys. Flawed, yes. Imperfect, yes. Fallible, yes. But the cops play for the good team. If you as parents, as elders, if you don't indoctrinate your kids with the good values, they're going to get indoctrinated with something else, by someone else, by a crappy school system, by empty-headed peers, by people who hate this country. Don't be a part of that by being lazy. Do something. Do something tangible. Take your kid to a memorial. Engage in ritual. Yes, ritual is a good word if you're engaged in good rituals. It's up to all of us 
to show appreciation for this country, to show gratitude for the men and women who've given their lives, whether it's in law enforcement or the military, to preserve our way of life. So with that, God bless all of you. God bless the men and women of law enforcement. God bless those who serve in our military. And God bless America. Take care.